Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is October 8th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We have an interesting information about the iPhone that I didn't know about. Mark had to tell me about it this morning. Well, I, I didn't know about it either. And it was part of the latest iOS update, which would be version 14. And if you're like me, it seems like we're constantly getting updates, but we don't always know what's being updated, the new features. And this one has to do with those orange and green dots that you may have noticed in your status bar. So here's a selfie I took a little while ago, and it's hard to see on the screen here, but we've got the red arrow pointing up to it. That's where the dot's located. And it's cut off there too. Yeah, but it's yeah, right there bummer. in the corner of your of your phone. Just yeah, to give you an idea. upper right corner, there there's what it looks like. A little green or orange dot has been included the new iOS 14 update. So the question, what does it mean? So the orange dot, talking about that one right there, it means that an application on your phone is using the microphone. So that microphone is being listened to and could be recorded. This may show up when you're using Siri or dictation, for example, and need the iPhone to transcribe your speech to text. Assuming all apps are acting in good faith, the orange dot should only appear when you're doing something that requires the microphone. And then conversely, when the camera is being accessed, the uh, green dot comes on. And that means that your camera has been accessed. iPhones and iPads do not have physical LEDs, so Apple has simulated the experience through software. So uh, the, uh, the, the deal here is, is they're basically making it easier for you to know when your camera or your microphone or both are being accessed. A lot of apps, you have to give it permission. Right, to and you do may so. not know it's Oh, or using right. your microphone or your camera. At the right, time. so this is a mm -hmm. good way to know. And if it's being used without your permission, then you need to do some exploring and perhaps contact the software developer or to just delete the app entirely. Yeah, it says it may indicate an app is misusing your privacy. So yeah, I'm, or, I'm glad that we did. they have this. Well, it was there the whole time and I had no idea. Let's take a look either. at today's <laughs> nine at nine. The second presidential debate between President Donald Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden will take place virtually. The nonpartisan commission on presidential debates made the announcement this morning. The coronavirus outbreak at the White House is growing. An internal memo obtained by ABC News revealing at least 34 people have now tested positive. That's up from 24 on Wednesday afternoon. Governor Greg Abbott announcing bars in regions with low COVID-19 hospitalizations will be allowed to reopen at 50% capacity next week, as long as county judges choose to do so. At this point, I am not opting in, but I am going to try to give a fair hearing on it. Derek Chauvin, the ex-Minneapolis police officer facing murder charges in the death of George Floyd, is out of jail after posting bond on his $1 million bail. His next court date is set for March 8th. Protesters filling the streets of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. This after the Milwaukee County District Attorney decided not to charge the officer who shot and killed 17-year-old Alvin Cole back in February. Two ISIS fighters are facing terrorism charges related to the deaths of four Americans in Syria. A 24-page indictment outlines a hostage-taking scheme targeting American and European citizens from 2012 to 2015. President Trump says troops still in Afghanistan should be home by Christmas. He made the announcement on Twitter yesterday on the 19th anniversary of America's longest war, the war in Afghanistan. Tonight at 7, KSET is hosting a debate between the two candidates for Texas Congressional District 23, Gina Ortiz-Jones and Tony Gonzalez. Steve Spreester will be moderating the debate and it will air live right here on KSET 12. Thanksgiving turkeys will be smaller this year since fewer people will likely be around Thanksgiving tables amid the pandemic. Retailers and distributors are planning on buying and selling smaller birds. And that's today's 9 at 9. Seems to be the blanket explanation for many things these days. Oh, it's because of COVID. <laughs> like, oh, we're having customer service issues because of COVID. Our turkeys are smaller this year because of COVID. COVID. Of, or yeah. because it's 2020. Uh, yeah, that's, that's too. <laughs> There's that they also. Hand in hand, don't they? <laughs> uh, it's been a beautiful morning out there. It was just outside a few moments ago, Justin. And uh, this is the kind of way we like to start our day. It's very yeah. nice. And my question is, what happens to the big turkeys? Do they just get to chill? Oh, uh, we're eating yeah. them too. Oh, okay. they're, they're safe. <laughs> for now. No. Uh, 
Uh, yes, beautiful morning. We've got temperatures right now sitting in 68 degrees. We just jumped up 7 degrees. It'll be a rapid rise in temperatures. Humidity much lower this morning, down to 59%, but dew points were quite low, down to 53. They'll rise as we get into the afternoon, so we'll feel a little bit more humidity today. Temperatures up around 89. We'll also notice an increase in cloud cover because we've got Delta out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look at the numbers. 59 right now, Bernie Stage 59 in Bulverde, 69 Stinson, 67 down there in Pleasanton. Quite a bit warmer in New Braunfels, 72 degrees there. You see the clouds just off to the east of I-35, so these will be shifting in. There are some showers, especially out around Houston. That is associated with the outer bands of Delta. And the forecast, again, calls for a high of 89. We will put in a couple showers, mainly east of I-35 this afternoon and this evening. We're going to give you all the latest updates on Delta, let you know what it means for Far East Texas and Louisiana. Coming up, guys. Thank you, Justin. And we've got a stalled vehicle or some construction, uh, perhaps the former at I-10 and Medical. It's there at the side of the road safely out of the way. This just into our newsroom. Police have arrested the two teenagers accused of shooting and killing a man on the south side yesterday morning. 20-year-old Rene Ray Rodriguez Jr. was found dead at a home on Lassus Boulevard near South New Braunfels. Police say the two suspects have been charged with murder. We are working to get you more on this still developing story. Top stories we are following today. The whole apartment complex is a crime scene. That's how San Antonio police described the scene of a shooting on the northwest side. This was breaking news on the early edition of GMSA. It happened around three at the Boulder Creek Apartments in the 12,300 block of Vance Jackson, not far from Hebner Road, a resident at the apartment told us she heard multiple rounds of gunfire and people yelling and running. People say they're looking for, uh, rather police say they're looking for about 10 people, 10 who were seen running away from the area with guns. Officers tell us two men were hurt in that shooting and were taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The cause for that shooting still under investigation. Two Bear County Precinct 2 Constable deputies recovering this morning after being hit by a car in Austin earlier this week. The deputies were working off duty on a lane closure on I-35. Austin police say Charles Duffield is facing charges of intoxication assault of a peace officer after he reportedly crashed into a car that then spun out of control and hit the two deputies. Bear County Constable for Precinct 2 Leticia Vasquez says Deputy Alfred Alcatar suffered an injury to his foot is recovering at home. The legs of Deputy Leticia Martinez were crushed and she is still in a hospital up in Austin. San Antonio City Council is meeting in person today for the first time in more than three months. Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the improving conditions for coronavirus and the decline of stress on hospitals are some of the reasons why the council is resuming in person meetings. Council members will be separated by plexiglass dividers and will be screened for symptoms before they are allowed in. City Council will only be meeting in person for a session, which happens on Thursdays when members vote in person. All other meetings will still be held virtually. We'll be live streaming the council meeting once it begins on KSET.com. And in your morning headlines, some disturbing video of police officer being attacked and another racial profiling accusation. And we have another Animal Kingdom segment here in the show, but David Sears joins us now with our other top stories, David. Yeah, we're going to just start with that video. It could be disturbing for somebody to watch, so we'll just warn you right now. This is what, uh, what happened. We are in L.A. after an officer is getting attacked. This is in the police station. 29-year-old Jose Guzman just walking into the station just before 10 at night. He just walks up to the desk officer and starts punching him. This is body cam video from the officer. While Guzman is punching Officer Anthony Freeman, he manages to get his gun. Then he starts pistol whipping the officer and causes some cuts. The officer goes down. That's where the blood is coming from. And then Freeman yells out for help. Hey! You got my gun. What? You got my gun. Yeah, you can barely hear the officer in that video as well say he was starting to pass out. You can get a clear shot of Guzman with the officer's gun. Another officer, Sergeant Robin Aguirre, radios for help, then chases after Guzman. They go outside, shots fired. Nobody hit, but Guzman gets in his pickup, takes off. He eventually is caught and arrested. Officer Freeman was taken to the hospital, and the good news is he was later released. Now the LAPD says they have some work to do to improve safety for their officers. The whole goal is to be able to shore up if there were any weaknesses, whether it was training, equipment, tactics, uh, and to be able, hopefully, to make things safer for everybody uh, moving forward. 
Guzman is in jail. His bond is set at $2.2 million. He is charged with two counts of attempted murder, two counts of assault with a deadly weapon. Another incident in California, a man claiming he was racially profiled. This man stopped by police for allegedly jaywalking. This happening on Rodeo Drive. The officer stopped him and let him know he was jaywalking. He admits to it and says he was looking at his GPS to figure out where he was going. The man is Salehi Bembry. He is the vice president of sneakers and men's footwear for Versace. The officers didn't know who he was, and they asked to see an ID. Here's part of that exchange. Without reaching into your pockets, you don't have any weapons no, or anything, right? I don't. I'm, like, super nervous. No, no, I get you, man. That's car. right. I'm not putting you in handcuffs or anything. You want to take my phone or something like that? No, no, you can hold on. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to. So what do you want me to do right now? I just wanted to see if you had any ID, but without reaching into your pockets. I do have an ID. Awesome. Do you have any weapons or anything? I do not. Okay, do you mind if I just You can do whatever you need to do, man. I'm just nervous. So I'm gonna, can I put down my phone? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, man. What's your name? Salehi. Yeah, the officer even commented on his shoes. They detained him for a couple of minutes and then let him go without citing him. Bimbery and recorded part of the interaction on his phone. He later posted it to Instagram with the caption, quote, Beverly Hills while black. I'm okay. My spirit is not. Donatella Versace posted a copy of Bimbery's Instagram video on her account saying she is appalled by the actions of the officers. As you can see, this big guy could barely contain his excitement. Where is he? There he is. Let me get out of his way. Look at him. Look at that big guy. Huge bear. That's a big bear, now a fire survivor. He was treated by the Wildlife Disaster Network in California after getting caught in one of those California wildfires. The bear, all 370 pounds of him, released about 25 miles away from where he was found. Nowhere near any fires. He'll have plenty of water and food for his continued recovery. Boy, he was like slobbering to get out of that trailer, but he's like, look at him. Ah, look at there. Woods, <laughs> food, water, no fire. Great. All right, yesterday it was a kangaroo bouncing down the street of a neighborhood in Washington State today. That's a seal. Yes, that is a seal sliding down the street. This is taking place in Chile. It's oh actually gosh. an elephant seal. That's why it's so big. <laughs> Animal control says, hey, it's completely normal for a big dude like this to get out of their natural habitat this time of year. After checking out the neighborhood, he was returned to the sea with the help of neighbors and the Chilean Navy. Probably needed a ship to get him back out. I was going to say, you would, you would need your Navy to help get this guy back oh home, right? Oh, my goodness. There's one big dude. Look, I like to say he's just sitting there. He's breathing hard. He's just kind of sitting there going, wow. I okay. love the video of the bear coming out because he switched sides over there, David, and it almost looked like the bear came out, saw you, and was like, I'm going to take a hard right because David, <laughs> David's already got my spot. Yeah, I've been mean, known to scare a bear, too. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Thank you, David. David. And 9, 10, 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. And even though Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have not stopped by Texas leading up to the election. They are planning on spending big bucks on ads here. We're going to check in with Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. That's later on GMSA at 9. The two candidates for Texas Congressional District 23 facing off in a debate that will air tonight here on KSAT. Steve Spreester, the moderator, and joining us live to tell us more on what to expect later in this newscast. Moms always know best, or do they? We're live from Keystone this morning, where one team put mom's advice to the test through an experiment that's won national honors. The full story and, of course, the results of those experiments, just ahead on GMSA at 9. And welcome back. It's 914. A San Antonio girl has been recognized as one of the nation's brightest STEM students. Joanna Stone attends Keystone School, and her latest project has won her several awards and recognitions. Alicia Beta spoke to Joanna, joins us now live. Alicia, she told you this all started because she didn't like something her mom wanted to add to her daily routine. Yeah, we've all been there. Pairing us, parents telling us what to do because they want what's best for us, but Joanna it didn't really sit well with her, so she put it to the test in a very strategic way. That test ultimately naming her a top 30 STEM student in the nation. So was Joanna able to prove her mom wrong? Let's take a look. It originally started off because my mother forced me to eat probiotics daily. Are parents always right? Joanna Sohn had some doubts, so she did what she does best made sure it made sense scientifically. And I wanted to investigate the effects of probiotics and metformin on ischemia reperfusion injuries on roundworms. Which means she wanted to investigate whether probiotics were actually good for her health. And she did it by using roundworms. So I treated the roundworms in three different time frames, five days before hypoxia, two days before hypoxia, and one day after hypoxia. Hypoxia is like um, where 
there isn't any oxygen, basically. So I used nitrogen in through a chamber, basically. Then came the microscopic analysis. And I found that certain probiotics and concentrations of metformin had preventative and therapeutic effects. The project was within the top 10 percent of regional and state science fairs during the last academic year, allowing the then eighth grader to apply to the Broadcam Masters, a national STEM competition for middle schoolers. Joanna is the only one in the top 30, and she's the only one in Texas in the top 30. We're just so happy and proud of Joanna. Are you convinced to use probiotics? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Joanna is still taking her probiotics, which doctors say could help prevent ischemic or coronary heart disease. And Joanna shared with me that that heart disease actually runs in her family. So that's why her mom wanted her to take these probiotics. So she's convinced. And a cool fact about Joanna, just how resilient she is and about this project, is that hypoxia chamber that she needed, she didn't have it. The school didn't have one at hand, so she made one out of Tupperware. So talk about just being innovative and working with what you have. Yes. Amazing, huh? How impressive. I mean, an eighth grader at the time, too. Uh, now, Alicia, you mentioned Joanna was named one of the nation's top STEM students. Does she get any prizes for being a finalist in the competition? Absolutely. $500 cash prize. And then she's competing in the final competition that starts, I believe, next Wednesday, October 16th. And there she'll be up for other cash prizes, $10,000 and more. And get this, of course, she wants to be a doctor in her future, so she's on the right track. Reporting live from Keystone, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Wow, well done, Joanna, and continued yes. best of luck. Yes, congrats, bright Th future ahead. <laughs> Thanks for sharing her story, Alicia, up there live at Keystone. Justin Absolutely. joined us now, and uh, 68 degrees, not a bad start to the day. And of course, the break from the humidity is always welcome. Yes, well, yeah, it, it's nice, but it's only gonna last basically another few hours because oh. humidity is going to return this <laughs> afternoon. We'll be up and down with the humidity as we get into the weekend, but nice right now, 68 degrees and the northwesterly wind at about five miles per hour. We see some clouds here off in the distance, so we're starting to get some of those outer clouds from Delta and they're going to be around today, so a heads up there. 64 right now, Canyon Lake, 56 Comfort, 59 Kerrville, and then 60s across most of Bear County seeing a few 70s down to the south too. 70 right now in Catula, 71 in Kennedy. We should be back in the upper 80s again this afternoon. So uh, very similar to yesterday, other than the dew points are a little bit lower this morning. 53 here in town, you'll find some higher dew points off to the east. And as we look at the dew points today, I do think they'll rise steadily as we get into the afternoon. So we'll see some dew points in the mid 60s by this afternoon. So it'll feel a little bit more humid later today. Will it translate to some rain? Probably not. There is an outside chance for shower across our eastern counties today and tomorrow, but uh, I don't think it's going to make it all the way to San Antonio. There is an outside chance of that, but it's, it's low. And you see some of the showers lining up right now from Houston up north along I-45, and then you got some cloud cover that's trying to work into the area. So we'll see an increase in clouds as we get into the afternoon. There's Delta right there. Good looking storm now, a little bit bigger than it has been, and a lot of cloud cover with it out over the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this storm's probably going to strengthen a little more over the next 24 hours before weakening slightly before making landfall there in Louisiana. So here's the latest winds at 100 miles per hour, gusting to 120. It's moving northwest at about 15 miles per hour. And the latest track takes it to northwest and then starts to turn it north. It'll be a Cat 3 storm by tomorrow morning. Winds at 115 miles per hour. And then here we're getting closer to landfall. This is at 1 a.m. Friday morning. And uh, winds are at 105 miles per hour. And what I've done here is put the wind radii on the map. So this yellow color shows where the winds will be 40 to 55 miles per hour. And then you got 55 to 74 within the orange, but a small area that could see hurricane force winds. And that's going to be western Louisiana, places like Cameron, maybe even eventually Lake Charles. It'll be a close call there. Of course, an area that got hit very hard uh, by Laura. And then eventually it'll move north and weaken. Uh, there are hurricane warnings in place for much of Louisiana, especially western Louisiana. And as we look at the storm surge, and I think that's going to be the big issue with this storm. Four to seven feet, uh, potentially up to seven to 11 feet as you get into central Louisiana. Places like Morgan City can see that big rise in water as this storm roars ashore. As far as rainfall goes, we're talking six inches plus. So not huge numbers, but there will be some flooding. And then it really tapers off as you go west. Houston could pick up about an inch. You go west of that. We're looking at maybe a tenth of an inch for some of our eastern counties if we can get some of those showers going. So the forecast calls for a few showers 
uh, this afternoon well to the east of San Antonio, I think. But as we get into tomorrow, some of that tries to spread a little bit further to the west. This does show a couple showers tomorrow afternoon with partly cloudy skies. And then by the weekend, we clear out and temperatures will get warm. So forecast for today, 81 noontime will be up around 89 with partly cloudy skies in the extended forecast. Uh, tomorrow, a little cooler, 88 to partly cloudy and then hot this weekend. We could be challenging some records on Sunday. We'll get a frontal battery Monday that'll cool us down by the middle part of next week, guys. We Fair will enough. prepare for the heat. Thank, Thank you, you, Dustin. 921, 68 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, Governor Greg Abbott giving the green light for bars to reopen for in-person service next week, as long as their county governments choose to allow it. Why it's drawing mixed reviews, that's coming up next as we check in with Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Joe Biden and his vice presidential pick Kamala Harris have yet to visit Texas in the run up to Election Day, but the campaign is set to spend upwards of six million dollars on TV ads here and working to clear his name in the face of fresh criminal allegations. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton released new information yesterday addressing claims that seven senior aides made last week that Paxton is violating federal laws. Texas Tribune Alana Rocha joins us now to talk about these stories and about Governor Greg Abbott's announcement about reopening opening bars in Texas. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. So let's start with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The campaign set to spend upwards of six million dollars on TV ads here. That's more money than any Democratic presidential nominee has spent in decades. Is this just a reaction to the polls that continue to show a close race here? Yes, uh, that is, uh, of course, a large part of it, uh, enticing them to spend such a, a sum here in the state, the first or the largest a sum for a Democratic presidential candidate in 25 years. Uh, but, you know, they're also looking uh, to utilize this effort to reach uh, more voters of color, according to the campaign. And so you'll see these ads on national networks such as uh, BET, Univision, Telemundo, uh, ESPN Deportes, uh, in an attempt to reach those voters. But also, a foot here as our Abby Livingston, D.C. Bureau Chief, is working on a story today about sort of a reverse coattails uh, happening. So that Biden stands to benefit from hot races down ballot uh, when it comes to congrats, when it comes to Congress and the state house, where Democrats are raising a lot of money in an attempt to flip the state house and stay competitive in Congress. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton working to clear his name. Yesterday, he released new information addressing the claims that seven senior aides made last week about Paxton violating federal laws. However, the documents released don't appear to approve or disprove anything. Why not? No, they raise a lot of questions. One of the documents he released yesterday was the referral from the Travis County District Attorney's Office here in Austin, uh, asking the AG to investigate claims of misconduct by uh, the FBI, by Department of Public Safety. Uh, those are allegations made from a Paxton donor, Nate Paul, a uh, wealthy real estate investor here in the Austin area. And so, uh, you know, a couple questions there. Uh, the referral uh, said, you know, Paxton says comes from the uh, Travis County District Attorney. The DA says actually Paxton came to her uh, with the initial complaint. Her office looked into it and then kicked it back to the AG. So the order isn't exactly there. And then further, the outside counsel he saw was neither uh, independent nor a prosecutor. And so that raised some flags too. Paxton though does maintain his innocence and he's not going anywhere. He said he's not resigning or leaving his post. All right. Well, Governor Greg Abbott made an announcement yesterday giving bars in Texas a green light to reopen for in-person service next week as long as their county governments choose to allow it. The announcement drew mixed reviews from bar owners, though. Why do you think that happened? Yeah, uh, the head of the Texas Bar and Nightclub Alliance said, you know, saw Abbott's order as kicking it to the counties without giving them any guidance or guideposts on exactly how to determine whether or not bars should reopen. And Sure enough, as soon as you uh, heard the governor's announcement, the county judges, uh, I believe in your area, but definitely in Houston and Dallas as well, uh, said that their bars won't be a reopening given you know the urban setting and, and the number of cases that they've seen in those areas. So some criticism, but overall a, a welcomed uh, announcement from the governor. Wines, distilleries are, are affected by this as well, and they are definitely uh, excited at the opportunity to reopen at 50% outdoor seating, um, again, in counties where it happens. All right, Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Much more from you and your colleagues on TexasTribune.org. Thank you, Alana. Thank you.
Still to come on GMSA at 9, Vice President Mike Pence and U.S. Senator Kamala Harris facing off last night in a debate. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live with a recap and has latest developments in the upcoming presidential debates. There's been a lot of developments this morning. That's next.
And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, millions of Americans have lost their jobs amid the pandemic and many cities around the country have programs to help them get back on their feet. But what about veterans? Our Max Massey tells us about a special program trying to make sure veterans find jobs. That's tomorrow at 9. And we just jumped up to 77, so temperatures are rising quickly. Upper 80s today, very hot this weekend, guys. Well, this hour flew by. It's been fun. We'll yeah. see you back here for the news at noon. Have a beautiful day.